Looking at these routes, I think we can organize them better. Now let's see what these routes have in common. For example, all of these routes start with slash transactions, while these routes right here share the same controller. So can we group them by controllers or maybe can we group them by uh, the common starting uh, prefix of the URI? The answer to that is yes, we can. Laravel allows us to apply shared attributes like URI prefixes and middleware, for example, to a group of routes. That way we can keep the route definitions clean, organized and easier to manage. So first to group all of these routes by the prefix of slash transactions, we can use uh, a method called prefix on the route facade. So we can do something like route prefix and then enter transactions. Then we'll call the group method on it, which accepts a closure. And within the closure, we just put in all the routes that start with the transactions in the route. So we'll take all of these, move it in here, and now we can get rid of the transactions from these routes because we uh, don't need them anymore because they're shared and prefixed by this. Now let's test this out to make sure that it still works. So let's open the browser. We're going to go to localhost slash transactions and sure enough, the page loads. Now let's try transactions slash one, hit enter, and sure enough, that works as well. So as you can see, we can group the routes by the common prefix. Now let's see if we can group them by the controller because these four routes here have the same controller. To do that, we can call the method called controller on the route. So we'll do controller and say transaction controller class. And then we'll again call the group function here with the closure and move all these four routes within here. And as for the action, we can just specify the method name. So we just need the index, the create, uh, the show and store. So let's get rid of these three from here. And this should still work. Let's open the browser. Let's go to slash transactions. Hit enter. That still works. Let's go to slash transactions slash one. Still works. Let's go to transactions create and that works as well. All right, and seems like I forgot to remove this from here. This is a post route. So yeah, we don't need that transactions in here because we have a prefix here. All right, so as you can see, we can nest these groupings. We have the group here with the prefix and then we have the group here by the controller. And then you could further nest things and group things as you need. So for example, if you had maybe more routes with the transaction ID, you could create another route group here with the transaction ID as the prefix and then nest a bunch of those routes under it. We can also confirm that the routes are properly configured by listing the routes. So we can do PHP artisan route list. And as you can see, Laravel properly prepends these uh, prefixes and groups these routes. We can also group routes by route names. Just like we can name our pets, we can also name our routes. Naming routes are just an easier or convenient way to generate URLs for your routes. It can also be used to redirect the users to uh, your routes without actually building the route manually. So that way you don't have to remember the full route uh, URL and can just use its name and pass it to one of the Laravel's uh, helper functions and it will return the full route URL for you. To name a route, we can use the name method on any of the routes in here. So let's name our index method here. So we'll do name and uh, you can, as you can see, it's autocompleting transaction.index. You can call that if you want to, or you can call some things as simple as transaction or transactions, uh, or you can be more specific and call it like transactions.home. It is up to you. One thing to keep in mind is that the route names uh, must be unique, but we'll keep it simple for now and keep it at just transactions. All right, so let's run the route list command again. Let's scroll up. And as you can see, now our transactions route has a name and it's called transactions. 
Now in our controller within the transaction controller, uh, let's use one of Laravel's helper functions to generate the URL for our route. Uh, we can use the route helper function uh, and pass the name of the route. So that is transactions. And this basically returns uh, a string. So if we inspect this, we see that it generates the URL to a named route. So it essentially just returns the URL to this route. So let's echo this out for now. And let's add the break line here. Let's open the browser. Let's refresh the page. And sure enough, we see that it has generated the URL. Now this is very simple, but what if we have parameters, right? What if we want to generate an URL for a specific transaction? So let's name this route right here. So we'll give it a name and call it transaction because this is a specific transaction. And again, you can get very creative and uh, very specific if you wanted to and name this uh, transaction dot show or transaction dot view or something like that. So let's go back in here and now we can say route transaction. And if we try to refresh the page here, we see that we get internal server error that some required parameters are missing. And in this case, for the route transaction, the transaction ID is missing. If you notice, this uh, function here accepts uh, a second argument called parameters. So we can pass the list of parameters in here. So we can say transaction ID equals five. Let's go back, refresh. And now, as you can see, it works as expected. We could also redirect the user directly. So instead of doing route, we could do to route, which as you can see, returns the redirect response, which means that if we return this, it should automatically redirect the user. So let's comment this out. Let's remove this break line from here. Let's go back to the browser and notice the URL. We are at slash transactions. So if I refresh this, we see that we got redirected to slash transactions slash five. If we inspect the to route uh, function, we see that it's just a shortcut to this route method uh, from the redirect function, uh, which means that you could use the redirect route instead of the to route if you wanted to, and you would have the same effect. This is just kind of like a proxy to this call. All right, so let's change this back to the way it was, which is to echo the route. Let's go back in here. And one thing that I mentioned before is that the names have to be unique. Uh, now, when you're dealing with grouped and nested routes, it can become tricky to have names uh, that are unique. Uh, for example, let's say we had a route here for documents of the transaction. So maybe something like get slash transaction ID slash documents. And this was uh, maybe calling the documents method on the transaction controller. So let's actually move this in here and let's add this method to the transaction controller. So we'll scroll it down. Let's do a public function documents. And for now we'll return string. So let's just say transaction documents. And we might be tempted to name this as documents, right? Like this. But then what if you have another route called slash documents uh, that just renders maybe all the documents in the system or something like that. Uh, so what if we had something like route get slash documents, uh, maybe we have a document controller and the index method on it as an action, and we would name this as documents as well. Let's create this controller quick and the action method index will simply return a string here. And now if we go back to the web.php, we see that we have two routes that are named the same. Now, if we run the route list again here, we see that we have the documents name right here for the transaction controller documents. And we have the same thing for document controller. Now, what happens when we try to generate the URL for the name documents? Let's go back in here. Let's scroll up and let's do route documents. And let's get rid of the parameters because we don't have any. Let's go back to the browser. Let's visit slash transactions, hit enter. 
and we're getting error that the documents is missing the transaction ID. So as you can see, it's picking up the second uh, route and not the first one. So it's conflicting and it's overriding and it's not what we expect. So now if we bring back the transaction ID here and refresh, we see that it is generating the route for the transactions and not the regular slash uh, documents page. Now to fix this, of course, uh, we have to make these names unique. So one easy solution to this is to prefix this with something like transactions dot or just make it unique, call it something else like docs. But transactions that documents make sense because this is for transactions. So now if we go back and we refresh, we see that now the URL changes and it's uh, giving us the URL for slash documents and it's just appending the transaction ID 5 as the query string because we're passing it uh, in here. So if we get rid of this and refresh, we see that it's the correct route. Now let's bring this back and if we call it transactions dot documents we see that it works now what if we wanted to prefix all the routes within the transactions group with the transactions dot because this one is a transaction this one is transactions uh, we may want to call this something else wouldn't it make sense to kind of prefix all of them with transactions dot and then name these uh, routes the way we want so maybe something like this could be transactions.index or home. Uh, this could be something like transactions create or transactions new or something like that. Um, this can be transactions.show and this can be transactions store or transactions save uh, and so on. Now, since all of these names have the common prefix here, we can actually group the routes with the common name. So we can do something like route name and put transactions dot and then do group function and put all these routes inside like this. And we can now get rid of these transactions from here, from the name, and this should still work. So now if I clear this out, run the route list, we see that all these routes have transaction dot prefixed in their names. This route is still transactions.documents, uh, which we're trying to echo it out here. So if we refresh the page, we see that it still works. In fact, we can actually move this out in here and put it right here. And then instead of group, we can call prefix on it and then group it afterwards. That way we can simplify this a bit and this should still work. So if we clear this out and run the artisan list, we see that we still get the same routes. If we go back here, refresh, it still works. All right, so sometimes you may want to split your routes into uh, different files for better organization and grouping. It would be nice to basically move all of these transaction related routes into a transactions routes file. That way it would be a bit more organized. Because as your application grows, your routes will grow as well. And you're going to have a lot more transaction related routes. You will have a lot more other routes in here. And this web.php will get bloated. So to keep it organized, you can extract them into separate files. So let's do that. Let's actually take all of these, uh, all of the transaction related routes. And let's create a new routes file here. So we'll go to routes. Let's create a new PHP file and call it transactions.php. Let's paste it here. We need to import the facade and we need to import the controllers. And that should be good enough. Now, if I run the route list again, we see that those routes are gone. That's because we haven't registered and added this file and we haven't told Laravel that, hey, we have this transactions.php routes file that has additional routes. To tell Laravel about our additional routes files, we need to open up our app.php from the bootstrap directory. And here we have a method called with routing. And with routing accepts another argument called then, where we can pass a closure and register additional route files within it. So we can do something like then function 
and in here we can register our transactions uh, routes so now if we go back to the transactions.php we see that we are naming our route and we're prefixing with transactions and then we're grouping them we can actually get rid of this from here and put that within closure in app.php so let's actually get rid of that and let's get rid of this let's format the code and let's go back here and here we can say a route prefix and we need to import our facade so we'll do route prefix transactions and then we can do name transaction dot and then we'll call the group and now instead of passing the closure in the group where we were passing all of these routes we can simply pass the path to where our transactions.php routes file is located we can do that by using base path laravel helper function uh, let's actually format this a little bit so we'll do it like that and our path to the transaction.php as it's auto completing here is within the routes slash transaction.php so we'll do routes slash transaction.php and that should be good enough the base path helper function basically generates the fully qualified path to the given file the base path on its own without any arguments will generate the full path to our application's root directory which is uh, right here so from here on uh, it needs to know where to locate the transaction.php and we're just telling laravel that transaction.php is within the routes directory which is right here and the transactions is right there so now let's try to run the artisan route list again and we're getting an exception it says fail to open stream no such file or directory oh yeah i have a typo here it's transactions not transaction so let's change that let's run the route list again and sure enough it works and we have all the routes back in here and they're properly named and grouped as well i have the same typo in here this should be transactions now let's go back to the browser let's refresh the page and sure enough it still works now notice that in this list here we do have some routes without the name but they got prefixed with transaction dot that's because this specific route which is the slash process right here doesn't have a name all right so now you might be asking how often and how deep should you nest your groupings like how far should you go with your group method should you be grouping more stuff in here like transaction id and so on how far should you go now my suggestion is don't go crazy with it uh, don't go crazy with not just uh, grouping but also don't go crazy with naming prefixing and everything while in many cases it makes it easier to manage it can also make it harder to understand and you would always have to rely on the artisan route list command to see what routes you have I usually don't create new route files until my web routes file starts growing and I also try not to have more than one or two level of nesting unless I'm grouping routes with middlewares which we'll talk about a bit later. Alright so that's it for this episode in the next one we'll talk about the middleware. Thank you so much for watching if you like my videos please hit the like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Until next time happy coding.